Spirit. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, 
and the God of all comfort, who consoles us in our every trouble, so that we may be able to encourage those in any kind of distress with the consolation with which we are divinely sustained. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May the souls of Sister Angela Marie, Flora Faith, rest in peace. Amen. Bimar Batisim Paranoa Batisim no Mane Christus no Lungo Wai Kendo no Kendo Wai. Onyi so a bear what Ogi Christus Kendo Achiri Christus. Omi Oenra Nisima Kende Marchako Gema Nyengi Christus. Wakwanya Sae Majangono. Mondo Par Nitin Digi, Nitin Digi, Kum Lung Makende Mosin Lungo Agodo, Kendo Ka Omedo Oyoa. Let us in faith pray. For the souls of our dear sisters whom the Lord has called. May the Almighty God grant them eternal life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 
hear our prayers and be merciful to your daughters, Sister Angela Marie Yelimo and Sister Flora Faith Yeboti, whom you called from this life. Welcome them into the company of your saints in the kingdom of light and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pause a bit and in silence mourn our dear sisters with a prayer from your heart, a prayer for their souls, a prayer for their family members, and a prayer for the FSJ community. Father, God of all consolations, in your unending love and mercy for us, you turned the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Show compassion to your people in sorrow. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us, conquered death, and by rising again, restored life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet him, and after our life on earth, be united with our brothers and sisters, where every tear will be wiped away. We make our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we kindly request you that uh, the priests, the Superior General and their council, the regional superiors and their council members, and the parents of our two sisters will have an opportunity about 10 minutes to pray in the chapel while all of us will remain outside here or will go to the arena so that we prepare to begin the mass immediately after that. <coughs> So we are kind of requesting as we shall be singing together and the bodies being brought into the chapel. Uh, only, only those will take some few minutes in the chapel and then we shall continue with our mass outside the chapel. Thank you so much. God bless you for every activity and may God continue directing us and blessing us this evening. We welcome you at Asumbi. May the choir have the verses song as we have some people coming or bring the bodies into the chapel. <laughs>
Oh, 
Lord, hear my voice. Lord, hear us here attentively to the voice of my supplication. If you are not sure of our iniquities, Lord, who shall be blind? For with you there is mercy, forgiveness, and there is no measure. I have waited for you, O Lord. My soul has relied on his word. My soul has hoped in the Lord. From the morning watch until night, let his child hope in the Lord, because with the Lord there is mercy, and with him the stranger's redemption, and he shall redeem his child from all his iniquities. Eternal is grant unto them, O Lord. And let the patient night shall not hold them. May they rest in peace. And let our cry come unto you. O God, the Creator and Redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of your servants departed the remission of all their sins, that through pious supplication they may obtain that pardon which they have always desired, who lives and reigns world without any end. And let perpetual light shine upon them. Amen. And let your special light shine upon them. Amen. And let your special light shine upon them. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now. Now, brothers and sisters, the priest will be moving to the service immediately, and then organizing ourselves, we'd like to begin the Mass. And uh, as the bodies will be moved together, thank you so much for your cooperation, and thank you for your prayers. Thank you. And we are going together with the Dear General.
Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends in Christ, we are gathered here this evening to pray for our two sisters, Faith and Angela. We are here to pray that the good Lord may receive them in Eastern of Kingdom. But we also want to pray as we condole, first and foremost, with the families. And the families in two ways. The biological families from where they were born, and we also pray in the religious family, where they united in faith, in hope, and in love to serve the Lord among his people by leaving everything and saying yes to Christ. Therefore, to the entire family of the Asumbi sisters, the superior and the council, we want to condole with you. Our dear parents from the homes of our two sisters, we want to pray and condole with you. May you be consoled in the Lord. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken. May the name of God be glorified. Let us, therefore, acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries.
I confess to Almighty God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Almighty God, that the souls of your servants, Sister Angela Marie and Sister Faith, who for love of Christ walk the way of perfect charity, may rejoice in the coming of your glory, and together with their sisters, May they delight in the everlasting happiness of your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated and may we listen to the first reading.
She will not have your ignorant brethren concerning those who are as this, that you may not live as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with this word. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, 
let your loins be guarded and your lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast so that they may open to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds them awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will put on his apron and have them sit at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch, or in the third, and finds them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the householder had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would have been awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, God is good. All the time. And all the time. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered here in a very special way to pray for our sisters. We are gathered here to present them to the Lord now that they have gone before us. As we pray for them, we also remember in a very special way to pray for the families they come from, the people who knew them, the people who gave them to the church, the people who have always loved them because they loved them so much that they decided to present them to the church that they will serve as religious women. We pray for the mothers, we pray for the fathers, we pray for the brothers and sisters of these, our two sisters lying before us. And also we extend our prayers in a very, on a very serious note to the entire family of the Franciscan sisters of St. Joseph. I said at the beginning of law, the, the, the Holy Mass, citing the book of Job. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken. God is good. May we say, if we are listening to me, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken, may his name be glorified. It is a statement that is easy to tell someone else to say. But when it comes to our bedroom, when it touches the family, when death knocks by our door, we find ourselves speechless, we find ourselves incapable of uttering the same words. We are able to tell them to people, to tell them to our neighbors, but when it knocks by our hearts, we find ourselves in total confusion. And I know since the day we learned, the time we learned of the passing on of our two sisters, 
through a tragic accident. Many of us, I included, we have been asking many questions. Why that soon? Why that sudden? Why so and so? We have had so many questions. And I really want to believe very few of us could have gotten the right answers. Why Angela? Why Faith? Why the other little girl Victory? Why all this God? Sometimes we came, we, go, we came to a point that we were almost arguing with God seriously. God, why had it allowed this to happen to us? Why this sudden death? My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are here and I want to repeat again. The Lord gave us, the Lord has taken, may we glorify the Lord's name. In short, what I'm trying to say is this. May we learn to accept what has happened. Though with a lot of difficulties, with a lot of pain, with a lot of unanswered questions. Why these two young sisters? Why these beautiful souls? Why are they to go before us? I want to rely again on the Bible from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is time for everything. There is time for us to be born, and there is time for us to die. The only thing which remains uncertain and brings a lot of confusion and pain, we don't know when this time will come. The uncertainty of the time, my dear friends, should enable us to borrow a leaf from the gospel we have read. Let us be ready. Let us be prepared to go back and meet the Lord. Let us be prepared to tell God yes every day. And our sisters knew that on their way to a religious celebration, that the day they were going to evangelize by their physical presence, they would have met their death. They would have even said, let us not go. Because none of us will be ready to face death. What therefore should we do as a people of faith? Remember, the Lord chose them from among us. The Lord set them apart to evangelize the world as religious women. The Lord made them holy. The Lord consecrated them and gave them to the church, to the world, to become glittering signs of redemption to the society. I want to believe God who gave them to us when they were born. The Lord himself chose them before their mothers conceived them. And the Lord himself has called them back home. Though in a very abrupt way, but remember, death will always remain sudden even of an old person. Even if we are as old as 100 and something years, our death will ever remain sudden because we don't know when and how it will come. We pray in this holy mass that the Lord who gave us these sisters, the Lord who has called them, may receive them in his eternal kingdom. God may forgive them in case they stay, died while they had stains of sin. We know they died as human beings, normal human beings. With various weaknesses the way we do, we need to pray that the good Lord may have mercy on them. Lord, have mercy on our two sisters, Angel and Faith, and enable them to see and contemplate your holy face that they worked for while they were here on earth. Let us therefore, my dear friends, remember that the Lord has done what his will is, though in a way that we may not comprehend, a way that we may not understand, because no one wishes to die through a road accident. No one wishes to die. If it were possible, we would all remain eternally. But remember that at the point of death, our sisters have been given a chance to go back to their father, to go back to their first love, the one they loved most, and they left everything to serve him. The Lord they loved, I want to believe, in as much as we are mourning at the human level, we are mourning because of the gap created, we are mourning because of pain that has befallen us, my dear friends, 
let us also have that leap of faith that our sisters who have gone before us mark with a sign of faith mark with a sign of redemption have gone back to their first and only love god is good i'm saying this because they left everything for christ they left the world and chose to live for christ they left their homes and went to the various parts of this country serving god they found in him the true love and the one they loved most and loved them more than we do has called them back how i want to plead with each one here let us release our sisters let us let them go in peace so that our powerful prayer when we say eternal rest grant unto them O lord that prayer will only have meaning when we tell god you gave us you have taken receive them with love and compassion we need to let them go my dear sisters it is painful losing a teacher losing a nurse the people who have been nursing our wounds the people who have been telling us the will of god yes they have gone before us what are we to do let us commend them to the lord let us ask the good lord to be Let us pray, dear friends, that God may be merciful to us, that God may be merciful to our sisters, that the good Lord may give them. And let us pray that the good Lord may bless us. I want to ask the sisters, as we work on the mind, on the uh, general, if possible, to give us just one song, as we commend the songs for our dear sisters.
Thank you so much, sisters and the choir at large. My dear friends, I was saying that our sisters chose the best part. They chose the Lord of their lives. The Lord himself has called them back. Let us therefore commend their spirit as we pray for them, that whenever we recall and mention their name with a most powerful prayer for the deceased, when we ask for eternal peace, that the good Lord may grant them that rest. Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, these our sisters responded to the divine call of God to know him. They knew God perfectly well, and they chose him instead of everything else. The same Lord has called them back, the one whom they knew and knew them. They responded positively to the divine voice of God when they were called to go out to the whole world. They became part of the missionaries of the world, to the world, and they proclaimed the gospel. Let us therefore pray that God may grant them the eternal peace that they always worked for. Number two, our sisters loved God beyond everything else. For that very love, they have gone back to the source of love, the one who gave them the power to be able to love, the one who gave them the grace to be able to love, the one who gave them the grace to identify his holy voice, despite the other many voices in the world. They have gone back to their father. They have gone back to the one whom they loved perfectly. Let us also learn to enable them go and rejoice as they really suffer the greatness of that very love of God. Three, our dear sisters served God in, in everything that they did. Yes, the service led to God through the church. The service led in the communities. The service led to the people whom they touched their lives. The work they have done will remain as a legacy behind them. The work they did has always been, will always be remembered because they decided and they chose to immortalize themselves through service. God is good. I want to tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, if you want to immortalize yourself, work for God, work for the church, die for the church, and die for Christ. They did this without reservation. They did this with a lot of dedication and commitment. I say this because one time I came to the infirmary where Sister Faith was very young, struggling with the senior sisters, with a lot of love, with a lot of dedication. She was there for them. What a beautiful soul. Sister Angela was dying to make young ones learn how to speak, learn how to write, to become great people. I want to believe this is why God has called them so soon. Because they were good, they loved him most, and he told them, you have done well, come home and rest. And this is why, in as much as we are pained, let us borrow from what Paul has told us in the first reading. Let us mourn, yes, but as a people with hope. Because the life of our sisters has been transformed. They have been given a chance to go back to their father. They have been given a chance to go back home. They have fought a good fight. They have won the race. Let us cheer them up by praying for them, by wishing them well, that they may be able to contemplate the face of the Lord. Our prayer and our wish should be that our sisters may receive that crown for which they left everything and sought to serve Christ and the church. Let us pray that the good Lord may console us and let us ask ourselves a very big question. If they have gone that soon, if they have gone that abruptly, what about us who are still alive? What should we learn from this tragic death? What should we learn from the shortness of our their stay in the religious order? The answer is very simple. The Lord is telling you and me, get ready. Today it is theirs, 
Tomorrow it will be yours or it will be mine. Shall we be ready when the tower comes for us? Let us therefore, dear friends, ask the good Lord to give us the grace to understand that our sisters have basically gone back home. They have gone back to be with the Lord in the kingdom that he has prepared for those who have loved them, who have loved him. And for this very reason, we need to pray very, very strongly. We need to pray seriously and we need to learn to make our lives better. As a fact, my dear friends, let us know that the shortness of our life, the uncertainty of the time we go back to the Father, should invite us to daily conversion, to daily change of life, so that we bring joy, we bring hope, and we help people who need our support in terms of giving them the confidence that, yes, it is possible in the Lord. Let us therefore ask ourselves so that we may learn to bring joy and a smile to the lives of other people in daily activities. God has called us and God is reminding us today, if I've picked the two from among you, what are you doing to get ready for yours? If there is anything, we have always said it casually, that we are all death positive. My dear brothers and sisters, let us learn to prepare well. Let us learn to be ready, not for anything, not for death, but to go to heaven. We want to pray that the good Lord may console us. Ningependa nikiwasi nyote tulio hapa. Ili tuweze kuwaombea wa dada zetu ambao wamerutangulia wakiwa na ishara ya imani. Waliamua wakajitolea kumfanyia Mungu kazi. Waliamua kuwa kanisani kama wale ambao waliamua kumtangaza Kristo kama bwana na mkombozi wao. Wao waliamua kuwa watawa kwa ajili ya kumfanyia Mungu kazi. Na hiyo kazi wameifanya mpaka mwisho walijaribu juu chini ili katika maisha yao ya kila siku watu wonyeshe kwamba Mungu yupo pamoja nasi katika mambo yao ya kazi kama walimu na pia kama madaktari waliguzia maisha ya wengine ili Mungu ambaye aliwatoa kama watumishi wake na pia ndiye amewaita kwake tuombe ili awalaze palipema peponi ili awasamee kama walikuwa wakiwa wana dhambi kwa sababu hawakuwa tayari kupitia hayo waliyopitia hawakuwa tayari kufa ile siku lakini walikuwa tayari kueneza injili katika ile hali yao ya kujitolea tuna imani kwamba Mungu hata waacha ni yule Mungu ambaye alitupatia ili wafanye kazi kama watawa yule Mungu atawapokea kwa ajili ya wazazi wetu marafiki wao tunaomba ili tuwe na moyo tuwe na imani na tuwe na matumaini kwa sababu gani walikuja duniani hapa na sisi tu kumuomba Mwenyezi Mungu lakini yule Mungu ambaye alitupatia nafasi ya kuishi na wao ndiye yule ambaye amewaita kwake ingawa ilikuwa kikafla hatukuwa tayari na hata sasa bado tunajiuliza maswali mengi mbona kwa nini wameenda hivi haraka tuwaombe ili Mwenyezi Mungu awapokee kwenye ufalme wake tuwaombe ili Mwenyezi Mungu awasamehe na sisi tulio hapa ninawakumbusha kila mmoja wetu tujitayarishe na kama Mungu bado ametujalia nafasi ya kuendelea kuishi tumtumikie vema tulete furaha kwa wenzetu ili kwa pamoja tujiandae kurudi kwetu nyumbani hawa dada zetu wawili washatutangulia wao sasa hivi wanahitaji tu maombi si hata machozi lakini kama binadamu tutatoa machozi tutaomboleza tutalia tutapiga kelele tukiwa na maswali mengi tunapojiuliza maswali hayo tutafakari kuhusu maisha yao na pia maisha yetu wameenda sio kwa sababu walikuwa wabaya lakini Mungu aliyewapenda zaidi ndiye yule ambaye amewaita kwake nyumbani waweze kupumzika 
basi ile sala yetu tunayo waombea ili wapumzike kwa amani kila mmoja wetu atilie manani hiyo sala na iwe sala inayotoka kwenye roho tuwaombe ili ile kazi waliofanya hapa iwatangulie kule mbinguni ninaambia watu yule mtawa anayeomba kila siku yule anayefanya kazi kila siku kuamka mapema na kulala late kabisa akifanya kazi hiyo kwa bidii Mungu hatamwacha na ni imani ambayo tunayo kila mmoja kila mkatoliki kwamba baada ya maisha haya hapa duniani baada tutapewa nafasi ya kukaa pamoja na Mungu katika ufalme wake tuombe ili dada zetu ambao wametutangulia waweze kupata ile pumziko ya, wa, ya amani tuwaombe na tuwaombe wazazi wao najua wanahusunika zaidi wanajiuliza kwa nini mbona ilifanyika hivi lakini tunajua kwamba ni mapenzi ya Mungu Mungu alitupatia ni Mungu ambaye amewaita tuweze kumtukuza Mungu milele tumsifu Yesu Kristo Now we will have a moment of silence as we pray after the homily we have had. May we arise for the prayers of the faithful, those two or three who have prayers of the faithful come forward. Let us in faith call upon God the Almighty Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. Lord, hear us. For our sisters Angela and Faith, that the good Lord may receive them in their eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. For the families of these two sisters, Angela and Faith. For the entire family of the Franciscan sisters of St. Joseph. That the good Lord, the consoler of all, may have mercy on all who are mourning for the death of these our sisters. That they may be consoled and strengthened in faith and in hope. Let us pray to the Lord. that he, the Lord, may be pleased to show himself a father to our brothers and sisters who lack work, food, or housing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that he may grant to the souls of our brothers and sisters, friends and benefactors, the reward of their labors. Let us pray to the Lord. May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins, and make them share us in your redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Sacrifice and yours may be accept acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise of the Lord. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servants, Sister Angela and Sister Faith, we beseech your mercy that they would no doubt your Son to be a loving Savior, may find in him a merciful judge, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, as an eternal dwelling, is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
The light gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, we are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wonders resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim. By your state, you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us, make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our most dear spouse, with your blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, St. Saint Francis, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for an failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray alone advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, the Lord of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants, Sister Angela and Sister Faith, on who, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious bodies to our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you wipe away every tear from our eyes for seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, to say to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and you in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Oh, 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 oh. 
Eucharistic silence. In silence we are together with our sisters whom the Lord has called. Let us offer our prayers for their own union with the Lord who has called them. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken. We give praise to his name.
eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May the souls of Sister Angela and Sister Flora rest in peace. Amen. Now we shall have the Thanksgiving song. We thank God for the gift of the life of Sister Angela, for the gift of the life of Sister Faith, and also for the candidate Victoria. Let's thank God for the gift of this, for the moment that they shared with us. We remember in a special way their faith. May God bless us and bless them too, and grant them eternal life. Choir.
in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sisters, Sister Angela and Sister Faith, may come to eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated for some instructions. Very Reverend Father Gabriel, the main celebrant of today and of this Mass, our Superior General and the Council, all my brother priests, religious brothers and sisters, all our parents, relatives and friends, your choir. May I take this opportunity before we listen to the superior's general note, we shall have the MC to give us the direction. But before I invite the MC, after this, our program indicates that we shall have the viewing of the body and then supper. But at 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., we shall have the first vigil mass. From 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., we shall have the second vigil mass. From 11.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., we shall have the third vigil mass. From 1 a.m. to 2 a.m., we shall have the fourth vigil mass. From 2.30 a.m. to 3.30 a.m., we shall have the fifth Vigil Mass. From 4 a.m. to 5.30 a.m., we shall have the sixth Vigil Mass. From 5.30, we may have the Office of the Dead, or if there is priest available and ready for Mass, we shall have that Mass too, but we prefer the Office of the Dead. Immediately we finish Mass here tomorrow morning. The bodies will be moved to the arena for the funeral Mass. And uh, we expect that to be as early as 8, so that those who come may just go directly. And uh, we may also find time to organize ourselves back here. So let us do our best. And I can request the priest present that you have a chance to at least book for these masses uh, with Father Andrew, who is there, the chaplain, so that we can see who is going to uh, lead us and who is going to maybe take the readings. But we are all welcome for these vigil masses and feel at home. 
With those, let me kindly invite the MC to give us some directions before our Speaker General gives us her keynote speech. Seems as if uh, they are a little bit uh, far, and uh, maybe the directions. Okay, thank you. Very Reverend Father Gabriel, all the priests, our Superior General, the members of the General Council, all the religious sisters and brothers, was as the way to water. I greet you all. God is good, all and all the time. God is good. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. So I'm here to give direction very briefly, the major part of it. Our parish priest has already done with the order of the masses. So all our guests feel most welcome to the Institute of the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph. You are going to be taken care of and uh, our sisters are prepared and they are ready to receive uh, all our guests from all the parishes and the families of our sisters. So we are going to have the viewing of the body. Then. Uh, Later on, we shall be directed accordingly. We are going to have supper. All our priests present, all our sisters, both FSJ and the visiting congregations, we shall have our supper at the tent just next to the mother house. All our parents and all our visitors who are not religious, will have their meals at the aspirancy. The sisters from other congregations and all our priests, your accommodation is organized and the sisters will direct you accordingly. So tomorrow's program, we shall give you after the second vigil mass or the first vigil mass because the mass for the funeral or for the burial will not be here. We shall have it in the parish. So we shall guide you accordingly. Wazazi wetu tunawakaribisha wote, asanteni kwa kuja, kujiunga nasi, kusindikiza watawa wetu. Mkaitu watulivu, mtatulizwa, mtaongozwa, na kila kitu mtakachotaka watawa wataweza kuwasaidia. Mjisikie nyumbani kabisa na msikue na shaka lolote wa sababu mahali ambapo mpo ni mahali pa amani. So at this moment, so at this moment I'll invite the parish priest who will in turn invite our superior general to come and give her welcome note. Once more good uh, evening. Mine is very simple. Let me acknowledge the presence of Ajuri Kolobika, who is going to introduce to us the priest present. And also, after that, is when we shall invite the Superior General, Karibu Father. To the Superior General and all our sisters of the Congregation of Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph, 
all religious men and women here gathered, all our parents, and all the Christians here. God is good all the time. Allow me to take this very humble opportunity to condole with this family of Franciscan sisters of St. Joseph following the demise of our dear sisters whom we are here to celebrate their life. May the Lord console you all as we continue to pray for them and with the family members and all who knew them. I will request very kindly to ask all the priests from our diocese, from Abay, if they are around, to rise. I know many will come tomorrow, but some are already here. Thank you so much, fathers, for coming. And uh, those who are from without, those are who are from uh, other dioceses, both religious and diocesan, please arise and wave. Wonderful. We have a lot of guests. This is a show of solidarity with the sisters to remind you, we love you, dear sisters, and thanks for the work that you do everywhere in our diocese and away from here. I want to request on behalf of all the priests here gathered that the Vicar General of Kisi, who is here with us, will talk on our behalf. Dear Reverend Father, Karibu. Otherwise, may the Lord bless all of you and may the Lord console all of us. So, <clears throat> uh, name celebrant, uh, Superior General, the sisters, Nawazazi, Nawatuotu Abongo. We are a number of us from Kisi, and a number of us did not come because they are engaged in something. A few of us may be available tomorrow, and our bishop also is away. He asked me to, to pass his condolences uh, to the, the, the superior and to your sisters. There is a small book entitled, God has always uh, uh, disappointed me, but he never lets me down. At any given time, when we have a certain occasion, it is a disappointment, but God does not leave us, he's always with us. We pray for you, and we pray that they may rest in peace. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. Thank you, Father. And, uh, may I take this opportunity before we get to the final blessings from our main celebrant. May I humbly invite our Superior General to give us her keynote speech. Karim. Our main celebrant, Father Gabriel Atieno, our parish priest, the vicar of Kisi Diocese, our judicial vicar of Homabe, Reverend Fathers from various dioceses, religious brothers and sisters, members of the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph, novices, the parents of our dear sisters who have gone before us, all our visitors, family members, friends and relatives, God is good all the time. and all the time. God is good and 
We thank God very much for enabling us to begin this celebration of the life of our dear sisters. This painful journey began on the 3rd of December when that morning we were informed of the tragic accident that took the life of our dear sisters. It was a very painful experience, very tragic and also traumatizing. And you can imagine how our sisters suffered in that tragic accident. Those who saw the wreckage can imagine the pain and the agony that they went through, squeezed by the metals of the vehicle and thrown up and about. And you can see that from the scars that they have on their bodies. So this painful journey that we began with them on the 3rd of December is what has brought us here today and will continue tomorrow. Our sisters left in the morning to attend the function of a Thanksgiving Mass and they did not know what was awaiting them. Just a few minutes after they left home. So we thank God for everything because we know that God has a plan for each one of us. And God allowed this to happen to them. It is God who knows the mystery of our life and the mystery of everything that happens to us. And ours is to participate in this mystery. It is a difficult mystery for all of us as we gather here, and at the same time it is our calling to accompany our sisters with our prayerful presence and our intercessions so that God may have mercy on them and that the suffering that they have gone through may be rewarded and that God may give them eternal rest. We thank very much all our Reverend Fathers who are here to condole with us, all of us who are here to console each other, and we pray that tonight as we keep vigil, we may experience that consolation that God is going to give each one of us. And that we may continue to be determined to pray with our sisters. These were prayerful young sisters. And now it is our responsibility to accompany them in this journey so that God may hear their prayers God may hear our prayers and grant them eternal rest. I wish to express our condolences to all the parents of our dear sisters and to thank you very much for being here. We know the pain you are going through, but we may not understand it all. But we just pray that God may give you consolation and all the friends and relatives who are here. On behalf of the Franciscan Sisters of St. Joseph, I wish to welcome every one of you. 
to be here with us in Asumbi. I remember when we went to Kapsabet, there were many priests there with us at the mortuary, at the police station, and even for those of us who are at the source, they were there. And now you are here. So I want to welcome you to Asumbi, all the priests from Eldoret Diocese and other dioceses, all the priests from Homa Bay Diocese, Kisi Diocese, all our friends and relatives, the parents, religious brothers and sisters from all congregations, parents, relatives, friends, well-wishers, welcome to Asumbi, and welcome to pray with us during this vigil. Karibu sana, and feel at home. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Supire Kiano. And now, may I invite our main celebrant to conclude with us for us this morning. Blessings up. Kindly arise. So as we get uh, the final blessings, receive heartfelt condolences from Father Steve Arogo, who works in the minor seminary, Father Alfred Oshanda, Father Daniel Lohuma, and also in a special way, Superior General Andrew Council, the Archbishop of Nyeri sends his condolences and he says, he's praying for you and with you, and may our souls the souls of our sisters rest in peace. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the God of all consolation bless you for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race and in the resurrection of his only begotten son he has given believers the hope of, his, of rising again. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins and to all the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go oh, in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Our holy mass is ended.